Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna do another interview question. Uh, this is one that I've been asked so many times at a bunch of different companies, so it's definitely out there and, you know, <laughs> you might see this in your own programming interview foray as well. Uh, but I, I'm gonna walk you through some bad solutions and some decent solutions and kind of explain uh, what's going on in all of them as well as some techniques that may make your code a little bit easier to understand. Uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so the question uh, to implement is, uh, let's open up our interview question here. Uh, the question is we're going to implement a function called uh, is anagram, and it's going to take two words, and we're going to say whether those two words are anagrams of each other. Uh, so word one is a stir, and word two is a stir, and we're going to return a boolean. And that's the function. Uh, now, usually when I approach interviews, what I want to do up front is write myself a set of test cases to validate that the code is correct. Um, and, you know, if I notice certain deficiencies of my implementation as I go along, I will adjust those uh, to, to, you know, handle those particular edge cases. Uh, so up front, I'm going to write a few tests here just to, um, you know, make sure, make sure things are working. Uh, so I'm going to have some positive matches. Word one, word two, uh, word two, assert is anagram, word one, word two is true. Uh, and we're gonna have some not matches as well. Uh, and we're gonna use PyTest to parameterize these. And so this is usually how I start my interviews <laughs> is by writing out some test cases here. Word one, word two, and test cases, and we're gonna actually do the same thing down here as well. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna start with kind of like, I like to think about base cases and edge cases. And the two like most obvious edge cases to me are, you know, the empty string and a string that's one character long. Um, and I think we're gonna define the empty string as being an anagram of the empty string, just to have like, you know, a reasonable base case. Again, you could discuss this with your interviewer and pick pick how you would define the empty string, either it is or it isn't, and special case it or don't special case it based on based on how that works out. I would also say that, you know, a one character string is an anagram of the same one character string, and, you know, a one character string is not an anagram of, of you know, a different one character string. And so those are kind of like some nice base cases to start with. Another couple things that I would do is like, you know, have kind of just a normal case here, like, of and I don't know, foe, foe is not a word, but <laughs> you could imagine just like a, a two character word that's in a different ordering is, is you know, uh, it is an anagram. Also, if you had, you know, like oof and foo, those are also, you know, uh, anagrams. One thing that I've seen in, in implementations, uh, and again, like you wouldn't know this if this was the first time approaching this problem, uh, but one thing that I've seen in implementations is often people get tripped up on the, you know, counts of characters. And so, Something that has the same characters in it, but has a different, you know, quantity of them is not uh, an anagram. Also, you know, things that have different lengths are not anagrams. So you can say OF and OFF, even though they have the same characters, but they're they're not the same length. Um, and so these are often, you know, cases that I want to handle here as well. And I actually think that this is probably a pretty sufficient test suite to cover all of the cases that a particular implementation might have. Um, and you know you might you might comment on why why I did these I said it out loud just because it was faster and you know depending on how your your interview is conducted like if it's out loud you would orate some of those instead of maybe including them in the code um, or mention like if I had more time I would you know annotate each test with why I have a particular test case there okay but that's all out of the way let's start with implementing this function and I'm gonna start with the worst and slowest possible solution uh, that you could do for this problem I mean you could Make a, you could probably make a slower solution just by doing something slower, but um, we're going to implement this by computing the permutation or the combinations of every possible permutation. Yeah, every permutation of each word and every permutation of this word and seeing if they overlap. And um, this might sound like a bad solution, but there's actually a case where computing the permutations of this is, is useful. I'll, I'll go over that in a second. And so you would do something like for... Um, permutation in inner tools dot permutations word one and then for permutation in iter tools dot permutations word two 
if uh, perm uh, permutation one, permutation two, if permutation one is equal to permutation two, let me just make sure that it's not combinations that I want. <laughs> I'm not thinking straight today, so. Uh, list permutations foo. Yeah, so this gives us all of the different orderings of, of foo. Oh, actually weird. Why did it give us foo twice? Uh, oh, because there are two different O's and they're treated the same. Oh, I understand. I understand. Okay, if they're the same, return true. Otherwise, return false. Uh, no, no, this code works, I think. Let's install pytest. Oh, I forgot to change this. This should be false down here. Um, pytest t.py. And you'll see that we do pass all of our tests. However, this is a terrible solution to this problem. It's probably fine for small strings, but as soon as you get to, you know, large strings, this, you know, double for loop is going to be extremely slow. And the reason for that is, is permutations on its own is like a O <laughs> n factorial, because it's what, you know, three things expand out to one, two, three, four, five, six, three times, two times one, yeah. Uh, so this is an n factorial operation, and this is an n factorial operation. So this is n factorial times n m factorial. Now you can actually reduce this down a little bit. You can get it to n factorial plus m factorial, which would just be whichever one is the the biggest word. I guess they would be the same size, so n n factorial squared, <laughs> which is big. That's slow, uh, but you could reduce this down by you know making this a set, making this a set, and seeing if they overlap. Uh, that would be, or making this a set and then looping through this and checking if one is in here. That would probably be the, the fastest, slowest way to do this. Um, but we're not going to worry about optimizing this, this solution because we know it's incredibly slow and there must be something faster than this. But you'll note that it works. And often in interviews, like getting something that works is much more important than, you know, getting the absolute optimal solution. Um, I always say, like, you know, optimize for functionality first and then, you know, optimize for speed second or third or fourth. Um, you know, get get it working, then make it fast. Um, and I, I said earlier, like, this is a bad solution, but there are situations where a solution like this is actually a good idea. Uh, let's consider a subproblem of anagrams where you were wanted to say, like, you know, I have a fixed word, I know that word is always there, and I want to check if another word is an anagram of that particular word. And so you would, you know, you would adjust this problem to pre-compute a table of that constant word. So let's say our constant word uh, is, I don't know, food. And you would, you know, compute all the permutations up front, and then you would say, uh, you know, permutations equals uh, frozen set string dot join uh, word for word in iter tools dot permute permutations constant word. Let's tab this out so it's a little bit easier to read what's going on here. And so what I'm doing here is I'm computing up front, you know, all of the permutations of this particular word. I'm doing some work offline, basically making a, a lookup table. And then our, you know, is anagram of constant word, uh, word to stir bool. This, uh, this function now becomes extremely fast because we, we already know all of the permutations. So we can just say return word to in permutations. And this is 01. <laughs> So even though we've, you know, we've leveraged a piece of code that's n, n factorial in, in computation, we're only doing this computation once and we're reusing that previously computed value later on, uh, which, you know, can make our, our end function only, you know, instant in returning. Uh, so this is kind of like a neat example of like, you know, Sometimes the slowest solution is actually something that you would want to do. Uh, of course, our actual problem here is two words, so this, this you know, isn't, isn't relevant here, but it's something to point out. Okay, so let's step up to kind of the next fastest solution that I could think of, um, and that is to sort both of the strings and compare them. And this is a pretty darn good solution. Um, you know, if you sort any of these, they should end up having exactly the same length. They should still contain the same characters as they started with. And comparing, you know, two sorted things together should say whether they're an anagram or not. Um, so you can say return sorted word one is equal to sorted word two. Um, and if we run our set of tests, you can see that our tests pass again for this. Now, note this has, oh, I forgot to talk about algorithm. I talked about algorithmic efficiency. There was no space overhead in the other one. Um, this one does have a space overhead in that we are making 
uh, you know, two copies of this. So it's linear in space on, well, <laughs> these words are constant size, so you could say it's constant size, but it's, it's linear on the, the length of the words. Uh, but since we're doing sorting here, there's an n log n overhead to this. So this is O of n log n in uh, computation time and linear on storage because we are, um, you know, storing storing a, a new list. We're generating a new list from the input word strings here. And this is a pretty good solution. Honestly, this is uh, the last time or the, the first time that I was interviewed with this problem. This is the solution that I came up with. And I was like, you know, that's that's a good enough solution. Um, but there is actually a faster solution than sorted, and that is to use a counter. Um, actually, <laughs> I went back and reviewed the counter video, uh, and I actually went over this exact interview question in that, but I wanted to, you know, reiterate it here, but I will link the counter video in the description. Um, the counter solution is really nice to this. What a counter does is it allows you to count, you know, unique values in a sequence. In this case, we're, you know, these, uh, to be an anagram, it must have the same counts of a particular letter as another word. And so we can leverage counter directly. So instead of doing sorted, we can do uh, import collections and we can do replace sorted with collections.counter. Um, and what a counter does is it goes over this in linear time and computes, you know, a mapping from characters to their size. Uh, it also has, you know, approximately a linear overhead in space because uh, it has to it has to make a dictionary that's you know at worst the same number of entries as the length of the word um, and a dictionary might be you know, larger or smaller depending on how your dictionary sizing uh, is implemented i don't know how it's implemented in python but i assume it's approximately linear uh, probably more than that because it has extra space and you know hashing's not perfect but uh, this is also another solution to this problem and this is i think the best solution to the problem um, there's probably, there's probably, you know, a couple other solutions that are similar to this, but um, what this counter does is it counts the number of characters. I already talked about that. Okay, so we're cool. Yeah. But anyway, that's the uh, Anagrams interview question as well as, you know, a, a bad solution, an okay solution, and the optimal solution, and kind of how I would approach it from, from interviewing. Um, but anyway, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.